What's up everyone, I'm Mike, the brainchild behind Audio Architects. For those who are already subscribed, it's good to see you back for more. If you're a first timer and you're into speakers, amplifiers, CD players, subwoofers, headphones, music in general, and all things audio, you're in the right place. It would be best if you stuck around for a bit because I will show you everything you'll want to know before buying your next CD player as I review one of Cambridge Audio's entry-level offerings, the AXC35. Stay tuned. It was a Saturday, and I opened up my estatesales.net mobile app, which is incredible for finding local estate sales. I promise I am not sponsored by estatesales.net, even though I secretly wish I would have been. So back to the story. I was browsing for audio gear because what else would I be browsing for? I found one close by that had a Cambridge CD player. Couldn't see the model number, but I didn't care at this point because I'm a massive fan of Cambridge audio gear. It was, uh, it was a Saturday and this thing had been running since Friday. So I rushed over hoping it would still be there. The, don't get me wrong guys, the hunt is real. I see audiophiles scouting these spots early on, so I mentally prepared myself for the inevitable letdown. After pulling up and entering the house, I ransacked that place, top, bottom, everywhere, couldn't find it, till I finally found it in this weird little room off to the side of the kitchen. Upon closer inspection, it's the AXC35. It was priced at 70 bucks, but since it was Saturday, it was 50% off day, so your boy here picked up this gem in pristine condition, not a ding, dent, or scratch for 35 bucks. I'm sorry, I don't mean to rub it in your faces, but yeah, I kinda do. Now, it retails for 350 bucks, and I don't want to devalue this product in any way just because I was fortunate. I usually get my review units from the manufacturer through the correct channels, however, this was definitely the right place and time kind of situation. I will provide links in the description below where you could uh, purchase one after hearing my evaluation if you choose to. Let's go over the specs and tech for all my audio nerds out there that love science. So right off the bat, I love how minimalist Cambridge designed the front fascia. This unit itself is meant to be a perfect match for their AXA35 integrated amplifier, which if you stack them atop one another are perfectly symmetrical and have this cool floating look. To be honest, I think this unit was built on purpose to sell in tandem with the AXA35. Okay, so I wanna get this out of the way real quick. This unit does in fact have gapless playback before any of you are wondering, it has it you're good. I know this is insanely important for some of you. Front and center, there's a nicely lit dot matrix display, five circular buttons for power, eject, play and pause, track, skip and stop on the right side of the unit, and a power button on the left side of the unit, which has a little white light in its center, which is kind of cool, kind of a luxury feel to it. Unfortunately, the display doesn't provide CD info. However, I am not sure that one would should expect that type of feature at this price point. It would have been rad though. I really, I really like those displays. On the rear, they kept it even simpler. It has an AC input to switch out the power cable if you choose to do so. It has RCA outs and a digital coaxial out if you want to use it as a transport. I wouldn't buy a CD player that didn't have a digital out. It's always good to have options and you definitely don't want to be beholden to the onboard DAC of whatever you're using. I do lament that it does not come with an optical out or USB input. However, I feel that Cambridge wanted to keep it simple and in inexpensive, and they did just that. Uh, the onboard DAC is a Wolfson WM8524, which was surprising considering the unit's price. It's regarded as a really decent DAC within the audio community, so that's cool. Uh, it will play MP3s and WMAs from your old burnt CDRs and CDRWs in case you kept those from you know the early 2000s, or if you're like me and still burn CDs today because I can't move on with my life. It's a sturdy unit, doesn't feel cheap or flimsy. Well, I suppose all of this I just discussed brings us to the question that needs to be answered. How did it sound? It's such a simple unit. So how did it sound? Let's find out. To evaluate the sound fairly and reasonably, I use cables from AudioQuest, a brand most people know can easily buy it like Best Buy and can respect. I first tried it using the onboard DAC, so that means I ran the RCA cable from the CD player directly to my Evo 150 integrated amplifier 
from Cambridge. I told you, love Cambridge. For the reference speakers, I'm using the Wharfdale Lintons. If you'd like to see a full review of the Evo 150 or the Lintons, just click, I'm looking at my monitor, click right here, or check out my library of videos and you'll find it a few videos back. I recently picked up a few new CDs from my local record shop, and by few I mean there's a stack of like 20, uh, and I wanted to listen to some of those. So first I wanted to hear the latest release from Tears for Fears that just came out. Uh, it's called Tipping Point, the album. I started from the first song and let it play through. Great album. I found the sound to be rather heavy in the mid-range. That's the first thing, guys, that hit me right away. A loud and open mid-range. The bass was very nice. The lows hit hard enough to really feel them. The highs, I'd say, were pretty, pretty good. I like the highs. There was a nice overall detail to it. However, you know, you know your system. You know its strengths, its limitations, and what to expect. I knew this CD player was capable of much, much more. As I mentioned in the specs and tech segment, this unit only comes with a digital coaxial out. So I guess they decided for me as far as what cable I use there, which is fine. No problem. I ran it to my Denifrips Aries 2 DAC with the digital coaxial cable going directly to the Evo 150. Again, I pulled from the stack of CDs that I recently purchased. I decided to go with Incubus's Monuments and Melodies album for this particular session. I remember listening to that album in my old Honda Prelude, like 1980s Honda Prelude, back in the day. That's one thing I have to say about music. It's like, I wouldn't have remembered this otherwise. It's almost as effective as your sense of smell with having the ability to pull from your deep memories. Psychoacoustics is a bit above my pay grade at the moment, but I would like to have someone on my channel with me to explain it to my audience because it's a really cool topic. So any psychoacoustic experts out there, shoot me an email and let's make it happen. Okay, back to the sound. So by using you know this as a transport, it was pretty different. I actually put Tears for Fears back in to get a proper A-B comparison to see just how much things changed. Incubus sounded great, by the way. The Denifrips completely pulled the mids down to a reasonable tonality. After hearing both ways, I now know the onboard DAC went a bit too aggressively with the mid-range. However, the bass stayed strong. It's almost identical. Deep, punchy, very pleasing. The highs mellowed out a tad bit, but without sacrificing any detail. It felt like the DAC just kind of balanced things out and gave it a little warmth, I, which is something that Denifrips is known for. I did feel the RCAs were slightly cold sounding for my personal taste. Overall, I felt this player performed exceptionally well for its price point. I believe Cambridge met their value proposition on this unit. It's challenging to find a good player with wonderful sound, good looks, and great build at a reasonable price. This is only 350, mind you. Most of these are going 500 plus. This would make a perfect choice for someone who is just getting into hi-fi and is looking for a competent player that will perform well and look good doing it. Would I recommend using an external DAC? Yes, I personally would, because I personally do use it like that. Are you going to be upset at the sound from the RCAs? Absolutely not. I am confident you will enjoy it either way. It's just my job to be overly critical and ensure you are getting the most of my evaluative listening sessions. It rocked though, <laughs> it's a good player. I'll throw some links down below so you could check out this player, some good DACs, the cables I used, and some other stuff I'm getting into, as well as where to find this really cool CD player shirt. You're gonna check it out. Thank you all for joining me. If you are already subscribed, thank you. I do have a Patreon you can join to help support the channel. If you are new to the channel and you like it so far, I really encourage you to go check out some of my other videos to see if my channel is the right fit for you. And I would love for you to end up subscribing and joining me on my journey in hi-fi. Thank you again for spending some time with me. Take care and I'll see you next time.